page 426, chapter 28, in Gethsemane. Upon leaving the house of Aaron and his wife in Jerusalem, Emmanuel went to his disciples and disciplices to a country estate called Gethsemane, which belonged to a man named Joshua, who thought well of Emmanuel. In the large garden of the estate, he spoke to his disciples and disciplices, quote, Sit down here, so I may go over there and ponder my thoughts. And he took with him Petrus and the two sons of Zebedeus, or Zebedee, and began to brood and be apprehensive, because he was frightened and afraid about what would happen to him. And he spoke to them, quote, Behold, it is true that I am wise and have great knowledge, but I am afraid of the events before me, both the known and the still unknown. For this is given to human beings, even when they are knowing and wise. My mind is deathly grieved. Remain here with me, therefore, and watch with me, so I will not be alone. For behold, it is easier to bear a terrible thing with one or two others at one side than by oneself. If the determination wanted it, this cup would pass me by, yet not as I wish, but rather my will be done, because this is what is determined for me. When he spoke in this manner, I, Judas Ishkarioth, joined them and said, quote, Listen to what I say. Over there at the city walls, things are taking place in the shadow of the walls, where I just saw veiled lights. But Emmanuel said, quote, They are no doubt the henchmen of Judas Ishariot is bringing, because he has secretly followed us here in order to betray me now. And he went away a short distance, prostrated himself, and reflected, saying, quote, if it is possible, may, th may this cup pass me by, yet not my wish be fulfilled, but rather the law of determination be fulfilled, so that I will be enlightened in the secret of the apparent death or powerlessness, which I must fathom in sorrow and pain. And he returned to his disciples and disciplices, and found them sleeping. And so he said to Petrus, quote, Can you not be awake with me for one hour, so I am not left alone in my difficult hour? Be awake and great in the spirit, or consciousness, so you will not fall prey to temptation. The spirit, or consciousness, is willing, but the flesh is weak. The second time he went away, prostrated himself, and said, quote, If it is not possible for this cup to pass me by, then I shall drink it, so I may be enlightened in the secret of apparent death or powerlessness, so that I can use it for teaching and may fulfill my calling or mission in a faraway land, or India, and for all time to come, or future time. And he came back again and found the disciples and disciples sleeping once again, and only I, Judas Ishkarioth, remained awake with him. And he left them and went away once again and prostrated himself a third time, and brooded in bitterness and said, How worried and afraid I am nevertheless, even though I know that I have to follow my pathway, which is determined for me. How willing the spirit, or the consciousness is, and how weak the flesh is, when it is so fearful of the pain. And his entire body trembled, and fine droplets of blood sweat, or sweat slightly mixed with blood, flowed all over him, because he was very fearful and terrified. With his face flushed, or flushed by blood sweat, he returned to his disciples and disciplices and said to them, quote, Do you want me to sleep and rest now, or do you want to be awake with me? For behold, the hour has come when I will be turned over to the hands of the henchmen. So arise and let us go, for behold, the henchmen are already coming. 
the capture. Verse 20. And while he was still speaking, there came Judas Isheriah, the son of the Pharisee Simeon Isheriah, and with him one of the chief priests, and with him a large crowd of henchmen of the high council and the Pharisees and Sadducees, armed with swords and with poles. And Judas Isheriah had given them a sign, saying, quote, Behold, I will flatter him and lead him into confusion, as if I repent my life. As a sign of the false flattery, there shall be a kiss, and behold, whomever I kiss, he is the one, seize him. And at once he stepped up to Emmanuel and said, quote, I greet you, Master, for you let me be repentant of my old life, so I want to follow your teaching now. And then he touched Emmanuel and gave him the kiss of betrayal. But Emmanuel said to him, quote, My friend, why have you come and spoken to me in a lie? For I know well, as I already told you once, that betrayal burns in your mind and in your actions. The henchmen then came up to Emmanuel, put their hands on him, and seized him. And behold, one from the crowd of the henchmen thought better, had a quick change of mind, and sided with Emmanuel, so he was remorseful and wanted to protect him. Therefore he stretched out his hand, drew his sword, and struck the chief priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Emmanuel said to him, quote, Put back your short sword into its sheath, because anyone taking a sword without being in danger will perish by the sword. Or do you think that I would not have been able to flee before your group arrived? But how should I have gone on my pathway if I would have done so? And the henchman turned away and wept, then fled and was never seen again. Thereupon Emmanuel said to the henchman, quote, You came here with swords and with poles to capture me as though I were an assassin or insidious murderer. How easy it would have been for you to capture me in the city as I was in the temple teaching daily, yet you did not seize me. You hypocrites! You were no doubt afraid of the people, therefore you now come to me in the night like thieves so you may throw me into prison in darkness, out of the sight of the people. Truly I say to you, the darkness will become light, and everyone will speak of your deed for which you will be denounced for all time to come. But then Simeon, the Pharisee, who was also among the henchmen, raised his voice and said, quote, How foolish your talk is, and full of lies, for why should we fear the people? You have wrongly taught the people confusedly, disregarded our laws, and called them lies. For so, so for this you will now suffer. You thought we would not seize you and bring you to trial, but you were mistaken. One of those who were with you was not of your mind and has betrayed you for thirty pieces of silver. So your disciple, Judas Ishkariah. But Emmanuel answered, saying, quote, Truly I say to you, you may succeed in shielding or protecting your son Judas as a betrayer, so that my disciple Judas Ishkariah will be accused as my betrayer before the people for a long time, but the truth will come out and be known by all people throughout the entire world, namely that my betrayer is not Judas Ishkariah, but is your son Judas Ishkariah, who bears the same who bears the name of his father, the Pharisee. You, who have made common cause with him, and have paid him thirty pieces of silver of blood money, or a reward, for betrayal. The Pharisee, Simeon Isheriah, was furious, stepped up, and struck Emmanuel in the face with his fist, because he was afraid of his true words. After this happened, the disciples and disciples, fearful and discouraged, turned away from Emmanuel and fled. But those who had seized Emmanuel led him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and Pharisees and Sadducees and those of the high council had gathered, as they wanted to pass judgment on him. Emmanuel before the high council, verse 46. The high priest, however, 
and the Pharisees and Sadducees, and those of the High Council, sought false testimony, or false accusation, against Emmanuel, so that they could put him to death. And even though many false and rewarded or bribed witnesses appeared, they still found no testimony, or no attested accusation, against him. But finally, two stepped forward and said, quote, He has said that God is not the creation, but simply a man like us all. He also said that he was begotten by an angel of, God, of a god, by a celestial son named Gabriel. And Caiaphas, the high priest, arose and said to Emmanuel, quote, Will you not reply to what these two bear witness against you? Speak an oath by the living God, so tell us, if you were begotten by the angel Gabriel, who was an angel of God, as the scriptures hand down. Emmanuel said to him, quote, You said it, but I also say to you that I am not a son of your God, and he is not the creation. I am not begotten by an angel, but begotten by the guardian angel, Gabriel, by order of the Ishwish, the ruler over the new human species that were begotten on earth through his will. He, the Ishwish, has come from the vastness of the firmament or outer space, and has brought the world under his will. Therefore, he is the supreme emperor of the human species of this world. One of them is here in your land, which you have deprived of its rights and forced under your yoke. yoke. Others are in the east, and still others are in the north and west and south, from the land of the kings with horns, or the land of Vikings, to the sea, where icy mountains drift in the water. But there are many human species living in all the directions of the wind, from one end of the earth to the other end, or worldwide. And the Ishwish is master over them also, although they serve false gods who are of this earth and are thought up by human beings. But if you consider a god to be the creation, you turn away from the truth and commit an outrage against it. Just as you are human, like I am, so is the Ishwish human, having knowledge about the spirit in the human being, or part piece of creation spirit equals spirit form, and about the human spirit or consciousness. And he is very much more advanced than all the new human species procreated by his order or directive. The Ishwish and his celestial sons are other human species who have come from the stars out of the depths of the firmament, or outer space, in their brazen, or metal, flying devices, or beam ships. But the creation stands above the Ishwish immeasurably higher than he stands. Therefore, the creation also stands above his celestial sons. The creation alone is the immeasurable secret that has begotten life through its laws. So it also stands immeasurably far above the Ishwish and above all life. So also above you and above your self-thought-up God and your false teachings, which you teach in confusion about this hazy picture or delusional construction, God, and against the laws and recommendations of the true creation. Recognize the truth of my teaching, which is the, quote, teaching of the prophets so that you may attain knowledge and wisdom in truth. Thereupon Caiaphas, the high priest, rent his clothes and spoke with rage, quote, He has blasphemed God, our God, the Creator. Why should we need further testimony against him? See and hear, now you have heard this blasphemy for, your, for yourselves. What punishment do you think he deserves? They answered, saying, quote, He deserves death. He deserves death. Then they beat him with their fists and spat in his face. And some of them struck him from behind and said, quote, Prophecy to us, you great king of wisdom and son of a celestial son. Who is the one who was beating you? But Petrus had followed Emmanuel and the crowd and hid among the people, looking through the doors and windows. And so he saw what was being done to Emmanuel. But then a maid approached him and said, quote, Are you not one of those 
who are the disciples and disciples of this Emmanuel from Galilee? Denial by Petrus, verse 71. When Petrus was asked by the maid, he denied it and said, quote, What kind of intransigence or irrationality do you accuse me of? For I do not know what you are talking about. But because of the maid's question, he was afraid and wanted to escape from this, the place, for he feared for his life. As he walked out the door, another woman saw him and spoke to the people, quote, This man was also together with the blasphemer from Nazareth. But Petrus denied a second time, and, raising his hand, as in an oath, said, quote, Truly, I do not know that confused human being. And when Petrus left the house, those who had been standing there came up to him, saying, quote, Are you not one of those who serve this Emmanuel? For you are giving yourself away through your manner of speech. Then Petrus began to revile Emmanuel, cursing himself, and swore, quote, I do not know this confused human being, nor his teaching of blasphemy against God. But soon thereafter, a rooster crowed three times, and Petrus thought of Emmanuel's words, and he hurriedly ran away from there and wept bitterly.